We've made it all the way to Wednesday. So excited today to talk about what we're doing in math today. So this week we've been speaking about an analog clock. And we've been talking about how to identify the analog clock. And we've also been learning on how to tell time by the hour. And we've already explained that when we tell time by the hour, we use the long hand or the short hand. Yes, we use the short hand. Today is challenge day. And the way that we're going to be challenging ourselves today is by filling in our blank analog clock to tell the time. Today's I can statement is going to pop up on the board. Three, two, one. Our I can statement today. Repeat after me. I can fill in a blank analog clock to show time. Awesome job. So what are some words in our I can statement that pop out to you? Maybe the word fill, possibly the word blank, and I know I get excited this week when I hear the word analog clock. And then what word can I box in that tells me what are we learning about this week in math? Yes, the word time. Awesome job. Before I get started, if I'm going to fill in a blank analog clock, how do you think I will show that analog clock? So on Monday, we took some time to identify an analog clock. And we said that an analog clock is in the shape of a, yes, circle. We also said that an analog clock has how many hands? Oh, okay, okay, two hands, yes. So we have the long hand, which is our minute hand, and we have the short hand, which is our hour hand. Awesome job. So I'm gonna label that. We have our hour hand, and we have our minute hand. And then we said that an analog clock has a certain amount of numbers. Who remembers how many numbers does an analog clock have? Yes, 12. So if I was to fill this in, we always start counting by the number one. So I will start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And yes, 12. Awesome job. And then we said that it also has 60 lines. <laughs> As we've mentioned already, our I can statement today is I can fill in a blank analog clock to show time. Mr. Nieves forgot his punctuation at the end. There you go, period. Oh, can't see. Better. <laughs> so, when we're looking at our I can statement, what are some words that we can pull out of our I can statement to put into our definition box? Well, we have the word blank. We have the word that we've been learning this week, which is analog. So now I'm going to move to our definition box. The word blank. When something is blank, let's think about it. What's another word that we can use for blank? Call it out. Maybe empty. So instead of using the word blank, I can say that blank can mean empty. Or that there is nothing there. Awesome job. The word analog or analog clock. We should be pros at doing this already. An analog clock has how many hands? Yes, two hands. How many numbers? Yes, 12 numbers. 
How many lines? <laughs> awesome job. 60 lines. And it's usually in the shape of a circle. Perfect. So, these are our definition words today that we're going to be focusing on. We are going to be using a blank analog clock to tell time. Awesome job. So, we're going to try to tell time. So, today when we're going to get started, we're going to start off with our blank clocks. We don't have any numbers on our clocks and we don't have any hands on our clock either but we do know that every clock needs how many numbers yes 12 numbers we also know that every clock needs how many hands yes two hands so i'm gonna start filling in my clock and i will start with my numbers so i'm always gonna start with the number one is the number one gonna go in the middle here no because we know that that's reserved for a special number. So we'll put one right here. After one comes two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven, then eight, then nine, then 10, then 11. And our special number at the top is 12. What is our special number at the top? 12. There's a second way that I can fill in my clock. If that's too hard to remember that one doesn't go at the top, then I can start with 12. And I can do something that's going top to bottom, left to right. Say with me, top two, yes, left two. Well, if I look at my clock, at the top I have 12. What's at the bottom? Yes, the number six. Then I'll go to the left. What number's at the left? Yes, the number nine. And then what number is to the right? Yes, the number three. And then all I have to do is fill in the blank. I know that it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. On the last clock, I'll leave it up to you how you want to fill it in. I'm going to fill it in the old way of going in order. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve is at the top. Awesome job. So now I see above it some different numbers. Hmm. Do I see any minutes in these numbers? No, I don't. So when there are no minutes, I know that my minute hand should be pointing at the number, yes, the number 12. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start filling in my first hand in all of the boxes, all of the clocks, I'm sorry. And my minute hand, is it the short one or the long one? Awesome job. It is the long one. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in my minute hand. I know it should be pointing at the 12 because there are no minutes in these times. So I went ahead and put my minute hand. Do I only have one hand? No, I have two hands. So I need to think, what is my second hand going to be? If I already have my long hand, or as we call it, our minute hand, the other hand I am missing is, yes, you guessed it, our hour hand. Now, can I just put my hour hand at the number 12? No, why not? Oh, because I have to make sure that the hour hand is pointing at the correct number. So if this is one o'clock, my hour hand needs to point at the number Yes, the number one. Notice how my minute hand touches the number, but my hour hand only points at the number. You see that there's space? Because our hour hand should be shorter than our minute hand. 
What about four o'clock? Where's my hour hand going to point at? Yes, the number four. Notice how my minute hand touches the number, but my hour hand only points. And the last one, nine o'clock. Where is my hour hand going to point? Oh, say it louder. Let me see you jump that many times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's an earthquake happening here. Yes, nine o'clock. One matches with one, four matches with four, and nine matches with nine. So today when you go back to your work, you are going to work on Filling in a blank analog clock to show time. Awesome job today.